All right, we're going to continue our discussion of ultrasound and we're going to get into some of the basics yet most important things in obtaining successful or accurate images so you can get good diameters and also accurate blood velocity measurements. And a lot of it comes down to the importance of angles and sample volume. In the previous video, we talked about the three different modes of ultrasound. You have the brightness mode or B mode, which gives you the picture you see here. You also have the pulse wave mode, which is a different set of sound waves, giving you the pulse or the velocity of the blood. And then you have the color flow mode, which just flashes red or, or blue, depending on the movement that it picks up. It doesn't really give you a whole lot of data that is usable for our purposes. It just lets you see where the artery is. Now we'll see that the, the angles are very important in this process. Now, one other thing that I should bring up is that I did not take this image. This image came off of the internet. I'm working from home today, so I don't have access to our own ultrasound to get uh, good images. So there's some things that I would do very differently with this, with this image. First of all, I would, they did a great job getting a picture of the artery, right? You can see very clear walls all the way across. Uh, so they did a good job finding the artery and, and getting it so you could get an accurate diameter. And when you measure that diameter in the ultrasound, you'd put little probes on to measure from wall to wall. And that would tell us how big the artery is. Perpendicular, always go at a 90 degree angle. Now, so they did that really well. One thing that they're messing up if for if it was for our research purposes, for clinical purposes, purposes it probably doesn't matter. But for research, they have something here called their sample volume. That tells you where it's measuring blood flow. It's only measuring right in the center of the artery. So it's only picking up the red blood cells that are moving through that region right there, not through this, not on the sides. And that gives you a bias in the measurement. And you'll see here later that makes the blood velocities seem a lot faster than they really are. Now the other thing that I would change on this is the angle. So within the sample volume you have this line reporting the angle of incination. And that angle we always want to be parallel with the artery and they don't have that. And when it's not parallel it biases the measurement quite a bit. All right so we'll go through this and talk about ultrasound. Now to understand all this, you just have to understand some of the basics of how the ultrasound works. It's all about reflecting sound waves. If we want to look at the picture, or if we're looking at a picture of an artery, in order to get it, we're sending sound waves out of the ultrasound. They bounce off of the artery and come back. And the different parts of it will reflect off of different tissues and how fast they reflect back and in different uh, different wave reflections and frequencies. From this, it can make up an image and tell exactly what the artery looks like. Now the best, always, whatever you're trying to figure out, if it's all about reflection, and which ultrasound is, it's all about reflecting waves. Whenever you're looking at reflection, you want to be head on. So the sound waves, as they are in this case, the best possible scenario is for the sound waves to be perpendicular to what you're measuring, the artery. That way the sound waves bounce off and they bounce directly back and you recover most of the sound waves. So the optimum angle for measuring ultrasound is a 90 degree angle where the ultrasound comes perpendicular to whatever you're measuring. So it can hit the walls dead on. So if you're trying to get a good image, that's the best possible scenario you can, you can find. But we also, when we're measuring, we're not only getting a good image, we're also trying to get blood velocity. And the blood is moving at a different angle. The blood is moving this direction, which means we wanna hit it head on. And we wanna hit the, the blood right as it's coming right at us, okay? As I'm thinking, I, I might have made something sound a little different. If we don't, I guess a 90 degree angle depends on how you're looking at it. Um, in reality, what we want is just 
that the sound waves are going straight at the tissue that we're interested in. That's the other way to think about it. A lot more simple. Okay, and we want the sound waves. If we want to see the artery and the artery is running this way, we want the sound waves to run this way to bounce directly off of it. Uh, just imagine if you're throwing a ball against a wall and you want to catch it, you want to bounce it right back, you throw it directly at the wall and you stand right where you are, just throw it straight and it comes right back. That's what we're hoping to do with ultrasound. If we throw it at an angle, it bounces and goes somewhere else. Okay? And we don't recover all, we don't recover the ball or we wouldn't recover all of the sound waves. So we always want to send the sound waves head on to whatever we're interested in. So to do that for getting an image, the best possible scenario is directly on top of the artery. But if we're trying to get uh, the the blood velocity, we want to get the blood move in the direction that it's moving. We want to get it head on. And so in this case, we send the sound waves from this way and they come back and however fast they reflect back because of the Doppler effect, that tells us how quickly the blood is moving. Let's think if we measured it here, if I'm trying to measure how fast the blood is moving, the sound wave comes and it instantaneously hits off of the red blood cell and comes back. It tells us absolutely nothing about how quickly the car, the, the blood is moving. Imagine like uh, if you're trying to figure out how fast a car is going, okay, and you're, you got a really creative way of doing this, uh, you throw a tennis ball. And the Doppler effect says if you throw the tennis ball, when it bounces off of the car, if it's moving head on at you, right, you throw this tennis ball, bounces off a car, however fast it comes back is going to be related to how fast the car is moving, okay? But if we do it perpendicular in this angle, if we bounce it off of the car as it just goes down the street past us, it'll bounce back just at the same speed that we threw it. It doesn't pick up or lose any speed because of the movement of the car aside from friction, right? So if you wanna learn how fast something is moving, you have to hit it head on. So we come to this interesting conundrum. In order to get a good image and measure artery diameter accurately, we want to measure from this angle. But in order to measure blood velocity, we want to measure from that angle, right? So what we end up doing is compromising, and we measure it from what's called about a 60 degree angle of insonation. So the waves come here, uh, we'll get some of the waves coming off and bouncing off the red blood cells. Some will bounce off of the, the artery and we get decent quality. If you go beyond a 60 degree angle, which you'll see on the ultrasound, if you go beyond 60 degrees, the values that you're getting are highly inaccurate. They have a lot more error in them than they do below. So we always measure with it the angle of insonation. This is a funny word, at 60 degrees. And I'll show you why that's important in a second, or right now. So when you look on the ultrasound, the angle that you get between here, this is the angle that the sound waves are coming out at, and this is the angle of the artery. Okay, you want that line parallel with the artery always. If, the, if you have, if you have the angle correct set to 60, what that means is the pathway of the sound wave and the pathway of the artery, those two vectors, come out to a 60 degree angle, okay? And that's what we want. That's any more than that, we're gonna get highly inaccurate blood velocity. And I'll show you what, what's happening here. So a while ago, I, I got, uh, blood flow. I measured blood flow at rest in a couple, several people, and I measured uh, the resting flow just as they laid there, and also the peak response to passive leg movement. Okay, and I measured the blood velocity at the proper 60 degree degree angle of insonation, and it came out here for resting, and here was the peak for the passive movement. Now look what happens if I increase the angle, or if my angle was off, if it wasn't perfectly parallel, let's say now it's moving that way, my artery's moving this way, it's not parallel, right? 
when we do that, when we have a higher angle of incination, the velocity is artificially inflated. So the, the ultrasound is going to tell us that it's moving faster than it really is. And if you go at a shallow angle at 50 degrees, then it will tell you that the, <clears throat> that the blood velocity is actually lower than it really is. So we want it at 60 degrees, and other studies have gone in and found that 60 degrees angle of incination is really close, or close enough, I should say, close enough to a 90 degree, to a, to a head-on incination angle so that you're getting perfect data. So whenever you're measuring ultrasound, you want to make sure that the angle steer is set to 60 degrees, and the angle correct also says 60 degrees. And the way you know that's right is if you have your line parallel here, parallel to the artery. And in the corner, it'll say something like AC60. That AC60 tells you the angle between the, the artery and the sound waves. Now, unless you mess with the ultrasound and push buttons, you shouldn't. That angle correct should always be set to 60 degrees and you don't have to worry about it. What you have to worry about is that this line down the middle is parallel to the artery. It needs to be parallel, otherwise it's not accurate. Now another important factor is the sample volume. I mentioned this earlier at the beginning. The sample volume is right here between these calipers. This is where you tell the ultrasound where you wanna measure velocity. You're saying ignore all of this stuff on this side and only focus on what's in the middle, okay? It's important if you want to get accurate estimates of blood velocity through the whole artery, you need to have the sample volume cover the whole width of the artery. If you're covering just a tiny bit, you're missing a lot of data. Or, this one's even kind of pushing it, if you have your sample volume covering part outside of the artery, right? So right here, now we're saying look for movement there. That's the wall of the artery. It's not moving. So we're deflating our value. It's your responsibility as a sonographer to make sure that the sample volume is within the artery, not on the walls, and that it is maximizing or getting as much of the artery covered as possible. So Here's an example of why this is important. Uh, this is a, a beautiful river. Uh, gosh, this was in Wyoming. I'm trying to remember the place. It's a hot springs, granite hot springs uh, in the middle of Wyoming, kind of close to Yellowstone. Beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, so here's a river, right? And you can see down the middle of the river, you got all these rapids. The water's moving really quickly. But along the side, it's moving much more slowly. You have eddies and small currents, maybe some wave pools. Uh, the blood, sorry, the, the water doesn't move as fast on the current because there's a lot more friction, uh, as fast on the shore because there's a lot more friction. The same thing happens in your blood. If this was an artery, down the middle of the artery is where you get the fastest flow. And along the sides, the flow is quite a bit slower. So if we want to know how much wolf if we wanted to know how much water is going through that river, we need to measure all the way across, not just at one point, because the flow varies all throughout the width of the river. Same thing happens with your blood and your arteries. So in this example over here, they have the angle of incination is nice. It's more or less parallel, but look at the, the sample volume it is not maximizing the size of the artery. And they did this on purpose to teach. So right there, it's coming out to 33 milliliters per minute. Now they increase the sample volume a little bit more while they're still resting. And it's to 22 milliliters per minute, but you're still missing that, the eddies, right? You're not getting the outside of the artery where you get most of the slowing down or the shear stress. So when they, they move the sample volume all the way out to where they're getting 
all of the artery, but not the wall of the artery, now it's down to 17.9. So it's gone from 33 to roughly 18. It's almost half, right? So if you're just getting the middle of the artery, which is what they do uh, when in clinics for sonography, they're not really concerned when you go to see if you have a baby in your belly or not. They're not so much concerned about how much blood is flowing there, just that it is flowing. So they go with a very small sample volume so that they can see clearly that blood is flowing. We care exactly how much is going through. We want the absolute number. And in order to do that, you have to sample from the whole width of the artery. Just like if you wanted to know how much blood is going through this little tiny creek, you have to sample across the whole creek, not just in one spot, here or here or here. Right? So make sure your sample volume is set to get as much of the artery as possible without getting the walls. If we, tried, if we got the walls, that'd be like saying, let's measure movement here on the grass all the way to this pine tree over here. Yeah, we're getting a lot of movement here, but there's no movement here. And so that part where the grass is that we are trying to pick up movement, it's detecting zero. And that's going to deflate your average and give you a false number. Same thing happens if you put the sample volume onto the artery wall, you're getting factors that are gonna be about zero and it deflates your number. Uh, one last thing, as I think about this, when we're trying to get the blood velocity, we're concerned with how fast the, the blood is moving, right? And the assumption is that the sound waves go out and come back and that all the movement in those sound waves is due to the, the, the blood velocity. But if we start jiggling this probe and move it around, if we're not holding it steady, now the sound waves are moving. And it's not because of the blood velocity, it's because we're shaky. So you gotta keep, it adds artificial movement and the computer interprets that as really fast blood. And so you have to hold the ultrasound probe still in order to get accurate data. All right, so with that, we've talked about insonation angle, angle correct, all those need to be at 60 degrees, no more. You have to have your sample volume set to maximize the artery, and uh, ultrasound takes a lot of practice, so keep working at it. That's all for now.